Okay, so we're a bit of a mixed bag this week. We are catch up on the house build and I am off tomorrow morning to go to set up the Lama show and we are exhibiting at that at Farron Gilbert. I'm gonna be there the rest of the week. So I'm gonna leave you guys here and show you parts of what has gone on and we'll nip you over to Lama and you can have a look at that as well. So here on house build now, Uncle Trev finished, not yesterday day before, so he's done and gone now. He's finished for the moment. There is bits that he needs to come back for, but not until we've either done something with that or we're ready to finish that bit off there. Here now, tomorrow, we've got Amac and the guys coming in to tarmac this. So it's dried out lovely because we've had no rain and we've had nice hard frost the last few days. So that's going to work a treat. So this pipe here we put in our drainage presently finishes there for the surface water from that side, as in behind you guys. And then we've got to pipe that in to the manhole over there. And this pipe here is to take the end of the ACOs. So we'll have another one that goes in there. We'll have a strip of ACOs running in level. And then we're going to sort of envelope everything down into that ACO. So we're taking all the surface water off this tarmac area and getting rid of it through there. We're going to connect that tarmac up to the existing drive, but at the moment we're only going to put a base coat on because again, until I know exactly what's happening on this side, we can't finish it and I don't want to have a joint in the finished tarmac surface when we are done. So we're going to base coat it, we're going to put a bit of topping just up either side the ACO so the side the ACOs don't get smashed while we're living in it effectively. We can achieve getting rid of all the mud then and get all this area sort of finished off to a point. So Uncle Trev's bits, he has backfilled and repaved this little bit here, which is where we had to expose to repair the underground pipes that go from the plant room to the house. And then behind you. So Uncle Trev has finished the ACOs then around the plant room in the garage, they're in. All this patio is in, the ACOs are laid here. We found one person so far that is not impressed with Uncle Trev's work, and that is Birdie the big dog, because that's what she thinks of what's going on around here. So starting to see it all come together now. We've obviously got the plant room, we've got the greenhouse, which we attempted to make a start on installing on Saturday. We took the instructions out, which is for a standard size 12 foot long one. Ours is clearly a bit longer than that. So then we got the extra set of instructions that is to go alongside the first set of instructions. And it is like the worst IKEA kit I've ever seen in my life to try and put together. So after three minutes of considering what we're going to do, I decided to ring one of the guys that they get putting them up for a living and that's all they do all day every day. So hopefully in three or four weeks time, they're now going to come and do it for us because I don't see the point in us wasting our time and energies trying to work out and fathom out what goes on with that. I'd rather just get somebody in, get it done properly. Going back to the patio, obviously he's laid all this now. This is all ACOs in. Everything is all connected up, like I say, to the point where we need to carry on the connection. We put the ramp through to the garden so we can get the lawnmower up and down. And when that's landscaped back to, that'll be the route through for the lawnmower. But the electric house is now finished. So the electricians have got that extra room to start putting the PV panels and the bits and bobs that they need extra and additionally in there. And just to finish that area off, we just paved that off so that if we are, because a lot of the stuff I want to do here is going to be planting trees. So if we are then hardening trees off, which I think is a thing, so it comes out the greenhouse, but it wants like a halfway house of not going straight into the cold. I think that's what we'll use that area for there that we can put a bit of an umbrella or whatever it is you put over them before we then start going off and planting. So it's a bit of a holding area of stuff before planting. Raised borders. And then finally, the pergola, which you've not seen yet. Okay, so you saw us install the steel frame, which was for the pergola. Now we've got the oak up there as well, which again, we lifted around with the crane, but now we've spaced them out and fitted them. We've took the tape off the door, so you start to get the feel now of what we're trying to achieve without that little bit of string that's dangling. But when we first started planning this area out here, I wanted the whole thing to be a big oak frame. Then when I started weighing up how much that was going to cost, we soon realised we wouldn't be able to afford that. And at the same time, we wanted to bring a little bit of modern into our very traditional build. So hence then we went down the route of steel. 
So the beauty of that in comparison to the oak is we can have far bigger spans. And as we didn't want posts all the way down each side, it's actually worked pretty well that we can have this big open span on both sides. So we can still get the lawnmower in and out of this garage door here. So you've got the big open access then down to the sunken garden. We've got the bifolds which open up nicely and this whole area then opens up to, an, in the summer days, a nice big sort of outdoor dining area with the table and chairs and stuff. So that was why we opted to put a steel frame in. We brought the black in which suits the crittle black windows. So that sets everything off nicely. I had thought about bricking these pillars up, but I think they look pretty crisp, smooth in black and brings that modern twist we're looking for and it looks good to the oak. So we've set this sort of like, almost like a table out of the steel. Then we've put the oak beams running across. So again, I wanted something nice, big, chunky oak. So we've done that. I'll show you how we bolted them in a minute to stop anything moving or help stop it moving. But then now picture when we've come to finish this, this will have all sorts of roses and stuff growing and wrap round it, wrap round it. So although it may take a few years to get it exactly as we want it, ultimately this is going to be quite a nice pretty area right outside the back door. So dead chuff with that. Show you how we fitted the oak. Okay, so what we've done is we've bought standard length, we had shipped quite quickly actually across from France of oak. Wayne has then took them in a mad rush He's put a router detail on the top and on the underside and we've cut and chamfered the ends off. So that end is not yet finished. We've got to finish that end. And then what we've done is we've quickly just given one coat of Osmo oil. The top's yet to be done. We've just got to sand that through now because we wanted to drill and bolt them to the steel. Although they're heavy enough to keep themselves up here and not really move with their own weight, what will happen is as these start to dry out in the weather, they'll start to shrink or twist. So what we've done to try and strengthen our steel frame up at the same time as hold these in position, we bolted them. So a little bit of work involved in that. We've had to rotor broach all the steel. We've had to drill all the oak. So we've bolted these down with stainless bolts. Now, the reason for stainless is because I don't want any rust start seeping through or bleeding across the edge of the timber because I think that would look horrible. We're quite lucky there actually, although Trent stock bits of stainless, one of Abran's main product ranges has been stainless. So luckily, although Trent didn't have the stock of it, Abran stock was there. So luckily we got them because I did forget to order them in time. So yeah, we've bolted all them down now. And again, we've just put a little seal of mastic on the underside of the washer, the big re repair washer on there to try and seal that to stop any water weeping into that hole. And then the only thing left to do for us here then is on this side of the steel under here, is we're gonna face that with a nice oak fascia. So it'll look like from the outside, we've got this nice projection of oak beam coming off of an oak face. On the inside, we're still retaining that nice black crisp modern twist to what we're doing. So then the very last beam on here can be fitted against the house. Once we put that fascia detail on, the fascia itself actually carries the beam closest to the house. I'm just toying now with whether we put like a pergola cover so if for argument's sake, it was a nice day like today is, you can have it open, or you get these ones that are almost like a roller shutter door on the side of your building that Constantine are out or that pull out like a roller blind. What I was thinking is whether maybe we could get something like that, that if it did start to spit with rain, but you're just not quite yet finished, you could pull that out. So don't know, we'll have to have a look at that. Unfortunately, inside the house, there is nothing more to show you guys because we still haven't managed to get back in there. Wayne is still around the corner working on the building for our customer to try and get that project over the line so he can get back here, get inside and carry on. And probably on the house build now, the last thing to finish off on really is the front porch. But like I said earlier, we're not gonna show you that because we're gonna do the back porch at the same time. So if you like what you've seen, hit subscribe, ring the bell, and we will leave you with a massive load of little bits actually on the house build and a few little bits of nice big machinery and kit from our nice montage. Boom.